I want to give myself the best opposition. I feel like Edgar Belenga, you know, has he has a lot of power. You know, he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. But I feel like there's a lot of things I could expose in him, and I feel like I could beat him and anybody else in the super middleweight division. These fighters, they just need to fucking grow a pair of balls and just get get in there. I'm, I'll fight whoever. I'll fight Berlanga if he wants to fight. I see him posting a lot about me, posting about the fight. You know, he wants to get that fight. I'll fight him. Did you guys reach out to him? About yeah, I did reach out. My dad reached out to his manager. Yeah. You know, but I'm not gonna put all that business out. You know, the him and his manager know know that we got in contact with them already. So whenever they want to get it, I'm here. You know, um, I'll fight anybody, anybody. I do not care. You know, I still have a lot of work to do at 168. I feel like I could beat everybody. And the fans, you know, the fans, they deserve these fights. You know, I've been calling, we, me and Caleb have been talking for fucking four years now, man. I feel like that fight needs to fucking happen. Already. I don't care if I don't have a belt. You know, I'm going to get a belt still, but that fight needs to happen. And Berlanga, uh, at first it was all good. You know, he, you guys were amicable. You feel like he, he, he started talk too much or it's just that yeah. the, the, his character is once you flip the, the flip the camera on i mean he's a, he acts like a nice guy without the camera with with the camera he fucking grows a pair of balls he thinks he's a killer in the ring he's not you can tell the people who don't who are who have that type of style they only have 50 percent 40 percent ko ratio always have the most to say they always supposedly their balls hang the lowest than everybody but that's only because they can't show that in the fights they can't knock people out, so they, they try to be this tough guy demeanor out the ring. I don't got to be tough with nobody. Everybody knows what it is with, with me in the ring. I'm going to come and fucking kill you. I'm not going to be talking sh I, well, If you talk shit to me, I'm going to talk shit to you, but I'm not going to come out fucking as a dickhead, you know, talking shit 24-7. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is, too. People, they just make a character in their head. They make a persona, and they never, they never learn to turn it off. <laughs> and that's what it is. Like, um, And I'm sure you probably heard this. Uh, David Benavidez talking about Edgar. Quote, the people that he uh, knocked out are all bums. They're all garbage and make him look nice. What's your response to that? Uh, I just laugh. You know, look at the first 16 opponents he fought. And look at the six, first 16 opponents I fought. You know, at the end of the day, for me, he's hating. You know, he, he, he sees the buzz that I'm getting. You know, and, and 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 for a guy like him to be calling me out and wanting to fight me and his father hitting me up, I must be doing something right. So, you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, he got to respect it. He know what it is already. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, he knows eventually that fight with me and him should happen. You know, God willing, it will happen. And it's going to be big for the fans, man. But for him saying that, man, he should really, you know, take a step back and, and understand it and look into into the box wreck and understand the first 16 opponents he fought and the first 16 opponents I fought. You know, I've been fighting guys with winning, rec winning records that's never been stopped before. Uh, Benavidez, in that same interview, uh, uh, talking about you, quote, this guy thinks he's a killer. He's not. I even have video of Erickson Lubin knocking this guy out in sparring, uh, end quote. What, what the heck happened in this sparring session? With nah, that, you see, look, look what happens. You see, when with a sparring, right? Cause I got all, I got the all, I got all the videos of that sparring, you know. So what happens is they grab a, a little small clip of a sparring, which they do with all the fighters, cause they did it with Brian Garcia, they do it with Devin Haney, they do, they do it with all these guys. They grab a small clip and they throw it out there, and then people run with that clip. You get what I'm saying? But a guy like me, I got the whole I got the whole sparring clip, you know. And and even and even Erickson went. And when that, when it went out and, and you know, out into the, the public, um, and this was four years ago, you know, this mm. is when I was, I was just turning pro, I had about like five pro fights, four pro fights, you know? So he even tweeted out, listen, you know, Edgar's the real deal, you know, Egg, and Edgar power is real, you know? So he, he, um, how can I say it? Um, he basically uh, co-signed that already, you know? Yeah. So I yeah. left it like, I left it at that. You know what I'm saying? For him saying that, you know, he, he know what it is already and I know what it is. You know, but for the fans and all the people out there, like I said, they grab a clip, a small clip, and they'll throw it out there and make it look like something's totally not. How many fights, Edgar, do you think you need um, before you're ready for the elite guys at 168? The Benavides is the Caleb Plants, uh, the Canelos. Um, you know, right now, the way we moving, um David Benavidez and Edgar Berlinga go back and forth. I'm going to leave the sources in the comment section below and also in the description box.
make sure you guys check the sources for Edgar Berlinga response to David Benavidez claims of Lubin knocking him out in sparring in which Edgar Berlinga he cleared the airwaves when it came to the sparring match he said I have the whole sparring and none of that went down for the people that's not too familiar with Lubin he's one of the hottest 154 pounders he only lost to Jamel Charlo who is currently a top three pound for pound fighter in the world on the other hand Edgar Berlinga is one of the hottest rising stars in the sport of boxing and he has dynamite on both hands as you guys heard on the audio Edgar Berlinga believes David Benavidez is hating because Edgar is receiving all the buzz on the other hand Benavidez is questioning Edgar Berlinga resume which he also called him out to a fight as well this is not the first time David Benavidez calls out Berlinga before I even heard of Berlinga David Benavidez was actually already calling him out as a champion which I have to give David Benavidez a lot of credit for doing so this is nothing personal because on the same interview David Benavidez also called out Canelo Alvarez and Caleb Plant in which he made sure to point out that them fights haven't took place because they don't want the fight with him now before we go off subject to talk about the landscape at 168 when it comes to Edgar Berlinga and David Benavidez them sound like fighting words to me however are they going to fight anytime soon absolutely not it's a lovely fight don't get me wrong However, Edgar Berlinga needs experience to go a couple rounds before taking a big step up fight on that level. Edgar Berlinga definitely can't afford to go into championship rounds without knowing how it feels like, especially not against David Benavidez. Experience is something money can't buy. That's just my honest take on that. You obviously have different fighters who choose to take different paths to a world title. For example, David Morrell Jr. with only four fights at age 22, he's already the regular WBA champion. However, it's important to mention that David Morrell is a highly decorated amateur who had 190 amateur fights with only two losses that were questionable. So he felt like he was ready. The point is, you don't make that step up to a world level until you're ready. Because once a fighter becomes a champion, then he has to face all comers. It does not get easier once a fighter becomes a champion. In the sport of boxing, it's hard to become a champion. However, it's even harder to maintain as a champion. Therefore, if you are going to learn, then you definitely need to learn on the come up not rush yourself to the top before you build the foundation because if you don't the structure is made to collapse so Edgar Berlinga has to build the foundation and get more experience before challenging the top dogs see there is nothing wrong for a fighter to take his time to get ready for the world level fighters fans usually rush a fighter to get to that stage which is kind of as backward. A fighter definitely has to take his time to get to that world level. Because once a fighter makes it to the world level and becomes successful as a champion, then he has to face all comers. Now at that moment, fans, media, so on and so forth, can actually force a fighter to take on all challengers all comers because he's now a world champion well let me take it back the fighter should want to challenge all the other champions however if he doesn't then it's fair play if the fans want to criticize him for it however when it comes to the fans there is no fair play they will criticize Shakur when he's the boogeyman that made the quickest step up before all of his peers 
and all the champions in his division found a way to avoid him. And now at 130, they all acting like Shakur does not exist. However, the media and the fans want to criticize Shakur. You also have Devin Haney at 20 years old. He had the pound for pound Vasil Lomachenko requesting witness protection from the WBC NBF franchise belt when Devin Haney was no Machenko mandatory. You also had Errol Spence. He was calling out everybody on the come up from the likes of Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, and Kell Brook, which majority were champions. You also had Ali, who shook the world at 22 when he beat Sonny Liston. Even Mike Tyson, he was the baddest man on the planet at 20 years old. So, like I said before, different fighters make the step up at different stages of their career. It's all when you're comfortable because once you make that step up and you're on that world level, you have to face all comers. It definitely wouldn't get easier then. Now, obviously, Berlinga is calling out Canelo. However, Berlinga has to go a couple rounds because one thing for sure, fighting in the pros and sparring in the gym is completely different. You have to get that experience inside of that square circle in front of the whole world. So you have to give credit to David Benavidez because he been calling out the likes of Ramirez, Edgar Berlinga, so on and so forth. Hopefully he could get them guys in the ring. I know one fighter that's willing to fight him is Jamal Charlo. He's the only one out of the bunch that went out of his way to call him out, which Benavidez Sr. quickly responded by stating, Jamal Charlo is the most dangerous fighter for his son. The most difficult fight because he's a monster. He's more dangerous than a Canelo Alvarez. And I completely agree with Benavidez Sr. Jamal Charlo is on top of that food chain. We all know a lion is the one that run the jungle. And you definitely have to be another lion to challenge Jamal Charlo. With that being stated, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. What is your take on David Benavidez and Edgar Berlinga back and forth? What is your take on this huge fight at 168 pounds? Who are you guys picking to win and why? And last but not least, subscribe below, click on the notification bell, and to be continued on the next episode of Aki Aki Ak TV. Peace and we out here.